When you're dealing with an XY graph or a straight line graph, you need to consider XY coordinates. What is on the X axis? What is on the Y axis? It's best to plot your points using small crosses or large dots because sometimes they will allocate marks to the actual plotting of certain points. In physical science, Generally speaking, you are going to draw some sort of a smooth line that goes through as many points as possible. We usually are going to go for a best fit line. So we try and find a trend in the data. Try and see some sort of a um, pattern and then join it with a smooth line. What happens in um, biological graphs is that you need to see the detail, but in physical science you want to see the trend. So let's take something like Hooke's Law, which measures the stretch of a spring depending on the force, and we've got a force that we apply and we measure the stretch. Force, measure the stretch, force, measure the stretch, force, measure, measure the stretch, etc. If I take the stretch and I divide it by the force, I seem to get a constant value. Let's see how that plans out in a graph. If I now say 2, 5, 4, 10, 6, 15, 8, 20, I land up with a beautiful straight line graph, a graph of whatever's on the y-axis versus whatever's on the x-axis. The x-axis is what I decided. I decided what force to apply and the stretch was then measured. As the force increases, so the stretch increases proportionally. If I'm going to get the proportionality here, I am going to say, how do I work out this idea of a gradient? And for that, I'm going to say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is going to be 20 minus 15 divided by 8 minus 6. And it turns out to be 2,5, which is what the stretch divided by the force was in the table. A direct proportional relationship means that you've got a straight line graph, and if you divide the y divided by the x, you land up with the same value, and that is the gradient of the graph. If you think about it, in maths, you've learned y is equal to mx plus c. That particular graph went through 0, so C is 0, and then Y is the stretch, and X is the force, and the gradient is the proportionality constant. An inverse proportion is when one variable increases in the same proportion as the other one is decreasing. What's very important is an inverse proportion is not any graph that isn't a straight line or it looks like the one gets bigger while the other one gets smaller. If you want to have an inverse proportion, you must be able to take the x and the y values, multiply them together to get the same value. So in this case, the length and the breadth, as the length increases, if I've got an area, a piece of paper and the area has to stay the same, as the length increases, the breadth is going to decrease. How do I double check that it is an inverse proportion? I take the breadth and I invert it and then I will get a straight line graph. So the inverse proportion as the one gets bigger the other one gets smaller and I put that. Notice it is a graph showing length versus breadth, what's on the y-axis versus what's on the x-axis. In this case it's not very obvious what the independent and dependent variable is. You either change the length and the breadth changes or vice versa. And then you can clearly plot the points. Notice that these go up in even spaces. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. You don't go 4, 6, um, sorry, 3, 4, 6 because those are the numbers that are interesting to you. You go very clearly in even scaling on the axis. This looks like it's an inverse proportion, but how do I check? I will take one of the values and invert them, like the breadth, and see what comes out. When I have the inverse of the breadth, I then get a straight line. And that tells me that I have an inverse proportion.